I guess how long have uh, has Twins Fantasy Camp been going on for? I think the the first Fantasy Camp may have been as far back as 1988-1990. Uh, we've had some members of our camp, uh, the Sampson family, Kurt Sampson in particular, that was at the initial Twins Fantasy Camp and has been to every camp since, with the exception of one year he missed because of a kidney um, transplant, and this year is his first year. So I think uh, he's kind of the godfather of the camp. He's been here at least 24 times. Um, so I guess what, what's your kind of role slash uh, position, I guess? Well, I don't work for the Twins. We operate our own business called Ultimate Sports Adventures, and we contract with the Twins. We're the officially licensed uh, provider of the Twins Fantasy Camp. And my role is uh, essentially to uh, recruit, uh, market, and uh, deliver the camp for the twins every January and usually the uh, first full week or second full week in January of every calendar year. It's the first event on the twins calendar which is kind of fun and uh, our job is to uh, make sure that we create a big league experience for all of our fantasy camp customers. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what's kind of like the day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month planning for the camp? Well actually uh, I, I tell people jokingly it's uh, probably the best part-time job I've ever had in my life. I, I'd spent 30 years in uh, the food, food service industry prior to uh, taking um, over as the director of the Twins camp. Uh, essentially the, the camp, if we deliver the camp the first or second week in January, um, then we do the post-camp wrap-up which includes getting awards sent out, uh, marketing. Uh, there are a number of people as you've seen this week Chris we have a, a lot of people that come back year after year. It's kind of billed as a bucket list kind of thing. You come once in your life, uh, but about 70 to 75 percent of our camp each year is returning campers. So, um, and I was one of those people. I came as a camper back in 2002 and attended four more camps after that as a camper before I got on this side of the desk. And um, frankly, I guess that speaks a lot about how I feel about the product. It's an inc incredible experience, and it's hard to to really explain the experience to people that have never done it. The only way to really uh, to really experience a fantasy camp is to be in one. And it's so much more than baseball, although baseball is the passion that brings us all together. And I can remember my second or third camp, we had some attorneys from the Iron Range of Minnesota, and we always do a post-camp survey. And one of those gentlemen had commented that uh, it was the greatest vacation I've ever had. I was 12 years old again, and all I had to do was think about playing baseball every day. So uh, from the day-to-day -day standpoint, we then, uh, after we've wrapped up this camp, which will be probably mid to late February with the awards, uh, we'll have individual player awards, we'll have team awards. We will uh, then turn our attention to the 2019 camp, which uh, will begin in earnest around the 1st of March. And uh, typically by Memorial Day, we're already at about 75 to 80 percent capacity. We're very, very blessed, very fortunate. Uh, during the summer months, we do a reunion game in Target Field. Uh, the Twins have uh, been gracious enough to allow us to spend a day at Target Field, and that's one of the highlights of the year. And then after that, immediately I turn my attention to making sure that uh, we have uniforms, that uh, we're looking at daily gifts that we give the campers. We're planning on that and ordering those and getting those in, in stock, making sure that I have a pro staff that's complete. We typically in August start sending out appearance agreements to our pro staff. And again, we've been blessed there. If you look across the landscape of most Major League Baseball teams and look at their fantasy camps, very few have the percentage of the true legends of their teams as we have represented here at Twins Camp people like Tony Oliva and Burt Blylevin and Frank Viola and Kent Herbeck and um, Gene Lark and Tim Laudner, all the guys that uh, were, you know, made the 87 team great and 91 teams of people like uh, Rick Aguilera and, and now Scott Erickson joined us this year. And then you have guys like Al Newman and Greg Gagne and uh, Gene Larkin again that played on both of those teams. So it's, uh, it's really a fun week and I can tell you from my experience working with the pro staff, they enjoy the week as much or more than our, our campers do. So after we get the pro staff in place and we start beginning to put the logistics together, there's the, the job of getting the hotel um, registration set up. That takes uh, a lot of work. Um, we have people that have to cancel at the last minute for death in the family or uh, work. Uh, there's a work uh, 
complication that they have, and uh, there's a variety of reasons, but we typically uh, will lose 10 to 12 campers in the last month prior to the camp. Uh, we try to shoot for 104 campers. That would be uh, eight teams of 13, and we've had as high as 132, and that year we played 10 teams, and this year, in, in uh, 2018, we're sitting at 112 uh, registered campers, so. Okay, um, and then you talked about the pro staff. Uh, how does how do members of the pro staff get selected to come to, come out to camp? Well, with the uh, arrangement we have, the agreement we have with the Minnesota Twins, they have the right to, to, of refusal to to look at our pro staff. Uh, we've never had any situation at all. In fact, they've been instrumental in helping us to recruit some of those folks. But frankly, it's been the people on the staff that end up recruiting the, some of their former teammates to participate in this that has made it work. And uh, they become uh, the biggest advocates for the camp. They had, like I said earlier, I guess for them it's a chance to uh, get back in the locker room with the people that they shared two World Series championships with and, and to uh, spend a week working with a tremendous group of people. I tell people uh, that I came to the Twins camp the first two years because I enjoyed rubbing elbows with all of my favorite Minnesota Twins legends. I came back the other four years because the people that you meet here are some of the most incredible people you'll ever have the opportunity to meet. Mm -hmm. And now, I know you mentioned that you were a previous camper before, but from your point of view now, I guess, what's, what's kind of like the experience, uh, you know, seeing you know, everyone out here mingling with the pros, getting, you know, being able to get coached by them playing baseball. Well, they certainly do a lot of coaching, and you've seen the cages are filled up every morning. Um, we had a situation a few years ago with a um, father brought three sons, and uh, great people. Uh, they hadn't played a lot of baseball, and uh, early in the week they, they were struggling at the plate, and their uh, manager in this case was Milt Kyler. Milt worked with them daily in the cages, and by the end of the week, they were all making good contact, and so they have the ability to coach people up. Most of us have never had the benefit of having professional coaching. These guys can tell you exactly by looking at your swing what you need to do to change that and then to become a better ball player. Um, but the experience, again, is so much more than baseball. The chance to sit in the dugout and listen to some of the stories that they tell from the past it's just as much fun as it is being out there in the in the field playing the game. Um, so it, it's to to grasp the whole experience. I always tell people you you really have to immerse yourself in it to find out what it's like. What's your uh, favorite part about camp? Well, without question, my favorite part is having the opportunity to work with the people that come to the Twins camp every year, year after year. And uh, I'm not sure. Were you with us at? That registration um, was that on Saturday? Saturday. I was not. No. Uh, if you had a chance to view that, I, I always tell people it's more reminiscent of a of a family or class reunion than it really is a uh, fantasy camp. These are people, a lot many, who only play baseball one week a year, and they come from all walks of life. We have uh, cardiologists from the Mayo Clinic. We have uh, attorneys. We have uh, very successful entrepreneurs that own their own business. We have uh, former bartenders. Uh, we have people that uh, are salespeople, people that work um, with their hands every day. And that's really my background. And uh, it's fun to see them all come together, and they're united by the common bond of uh, the passion for baseball. And that's what is neat for me to see. And um, I have said to my wife many times, what other job can you have when people are writing you a pretty good-sized check? Uh, coming to play baseball for a week, and at the end of the week, they are thanking you profusely for the opportunity to have their dream fulfilled. So our goal is to treat people like big leaguers for a week. Many of us never had the talent to be a big leaguer. Um, so we come here and we have a chance to uh, you know, really get to know on a personal level guys like Bert Bilevin and, and Ken Herbeck and Frank Viola. And there are a lot of friendships that are formed and, and bonds that are made. And then beyond that, the friendships between campers, I can tell you that at least one, if not two, of my best friends in life I've met here at the Minnesota Twins Fantasy Camp. Uh, so it's an incredible experience. And then last question, um, just because I'm kind of curious, uh, how did the whole idea of kangaroo court come into Well, I, you know, I, I really almost refer you to Bert for that because I think he could give you a better answer. But I think that was historically part of uh, what Major League Baseball teams did. I don't think they do it much anymore. At least that's what the uh, the younger players tell me. 
But uh, it was a way for these guys to have fun with each other, keep the clubhouse loose, build some camaraderie within the clubhouse. And I believe most of the fines that were levied by the in kangaroo court and major league clubhouses were then spent on a big party at the end of the year. So that's the way uh, that's the way it, it worked from um, a major league historical standpoint. But here it has become Tuesday and Friday nights when we do the kangaroo court. It's really become one of the highlights. Purple Eye Lemon has got to be one of the, the most um, entertaining and engaging uh, fantasy camp, kangaroo court, chief justices that you'd ever want to see. It's worth the price of admission just to come to Tuesday and Friday's banquet. And then all the uh, fines go towards, is it Children's Hospital? They go to the Lee Memorial Foundation, which it's kind of a, a neat deal, uh, Chris, because what we'll raise uh, in an average year between Fifteen and twenty thousand uh, dollars, probably three to four thousand of that will come through fines through Kangaroo Court. The balance of that will become will come from a, a charity auction that we do the last night at camp with t twins memorabilia, and uh, there'll be some trips and some things that people will bid on. And uh, we work directly with Lee Memorial Foundation. Uh, it's, it's at their cancer center. They then take our fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and they make us the chief sponsor of the Twin Celebrity Golf Cl Classic, which will take place next month here in Fort Myers. And at that event, they will then raise $100,000 to $120,000. So it's, a, it's, a cool, it's cool to be part of that.